Welcome to Webinar Wednesday. I'm so glad you took time out of your day to join us today to talk about family engagement in STEM. This webinar will be recorded so you can share it with colleagues or um, come back to it later if there's something you want to see again. If you if you can hear me, I'd appreciate just a little comment in the chat so that I know that the volume is okay. I'm recording away from my office today, so I'm not quite used to the setup and I'm a little nervous about sounds. Thanks, David, for giving me a response so I know that everyone is able to hear. Today, we're gonna to think about how we can engage families with STEM and through STEM. We wanna focus both on helping parents understand the critical role they can play in engaging or encouraging STEM learning for their children, and also how we can use STEM learning to increase the level of family engagement with our after-school program. So we're gonna be looking at um, this issue from two different directions. And I will encourage you as, as we go through the webinar to use the chat box to um, share questions or um, to share resources. If you've got um, strategies that are working for you, we want to hear those. Talking about family engagement in STEM is important because STEM is so pervasive in our world today. Science is everywhere in the world around us. Technology is continuously expanding and coming into more areas of our lives. Engineering um, is about all the things we really rely on, about bridges, roads, making our life better. And mathematics is part of daily occupations, uh, counting money at the grocery store, all sorts of things. So the idea that STEM is something that families should be talking about and learning about together it is, is kind of uh, intuitive that it helps provide resources to families to um, have STEM learning opportunities and resources to young people. We know the, the families we work with want the best for their children, and it is clear that in the future, to have the best opportunities, you're going to need to have an understanding and familiarity with STEM. So according to the Department of Commerce, STEM occupations are growing at 17% in the US, while other areas are growing at 9.8%. So there's just, a growing gap with more and more opportunities to um, people who have STEM related degrees and a higher income for people who have STEM degrees even if they don't choose a STEM field. And by STEM degrees I don't mean just a, a four-year college degree but a, an associate's degree in STEM is also going to um, help people go a long ways in um, where they, what sort of opportunities are available to them and how much they're gonna make in those worlds. So we want to have families know that STEM is important and also know how they can support their, their children and the benefit that it is going to give their children be, because it is across the lifespan. So the more engaged they are now, the more opportunities they will have in the future. STEM also helps children develop the skills that they need, not just for future work, but the skills that they're going to use right now in school and in getting along with other people. But in order for STEM experiences to have that impact, we really need to emphasize learning experiences that give children opportunities to practice these critical skills like communicating, collaborating, and um, thinking critically, solving problems, and also opportunities to develop and practice their social emotional skills and decision-making strategies. 
so this is a little bit about what STEM can do for young people, but it's also a reminder of how we need to frame STEM experiences and how important it is to include opportunities for collaborating or for communicating together. I apologize for the background sounds here. Without access to high quality STEM experiences, a large segment of the youth in our country are gonna be ill prepared for the future. They're not gonna be able to participate in the STEM based work for, workplace. So it's important that we provide opportunities for this, especially in after school programs where um, we reach a, a broad segment uh, of youth, not just those that are, have already selected that they're interested in STEM experiences. And the good news is that after school programs and out of school time programs have stepped up and are making a difference in this. Um, this is some information here from the full STEM ahead report, which is from 2015, so this is a few years ago, but the trend is simply increasing. Um, there is growing demand for STEM programming, and that's why more and more children, more and more programs are offering STEM programming. In this 2015 report, 69% of the parents from the over 30,000 households that were surveyed reported that their children did have access to STEM experiences in their after school program. So um, there was a growing opportunity for children to have those sort of experiences. And 89% of those families are satisfied with the STEM opportunities that their children have in after school. Furthermore, low income, African American and Hispanic families place an even higher value on STEM learning experiences for their children than do majority um, families. For these youth, out of school time STEM experiences enhance or impact their academic experience. The more consistently a student participates in an after school program, the greater the gains we see in math and reading over the course of that school year. For low-income students, this means that after-school programs can really give them an opportunity to close the achievement gap that exists between them and, and their peers in the classroom. And students who participate regularly in after-school programs improve their school day attendance, they hire their the, and the higher their participation is in after school, the more they're frequently they're attending their after school program, the greater the improvement in attendance and behavior that is observed at school. Even to the level the after school programs can reduce dropout rates and, and help keep kids in school and, and on that track toward graduation. So we know that after school programs in, are present in the STEM area, that they're offering opportunities and parents are seeing these as positive experiences. Today, we're going to think about how we can get parents more involved in the programs that we offer because family engagement can be a real game changer for young people. Parents are the biggest influence on the interests that children have and on their persistence in STEM. Support from a family can help them persist in STEM and make greater gains. But what we're seeing is that there's a disconnect between the research on family engagement and what is actually happening. So that's what we're gonna focus on today is what we can learn from the resource and how it can impact what we're doing in a positive way. Let's start with the big picture. So we're gonna start by looking at the STEM ecosystem. That's the whole picture of um, STEM opportunities that children have. It includes your families the school, your after school program, other opportunities that are present in their community. All of those are part of an ecosystem. And that ecosystem can help grow
that ecosystem can help grow and connect children to high quality STEM experiences. But one of the challenges we face is not all children experience this ecosystem in the same way. Some children have more access to these opportunities in STEM than others do. As a whole, the ecosystem provides students with experiences that build their competency and self-efficacy in STEM. Their, their, their STEM skills and their view of those skills both increase. The ecosystem also, also helps deepen the understanding that children have about their current and future potential to solve problems and be a contributor in this area. And it helps strengthen their social emotional skills, including persistence, resiliency, creativity, problem solving, and collaboration. We've come back to those skills over and over because it's not just about the STEM content, but it's about the other things they're learning along the way. And organizations that are part of this ecosystem, like zoos, museums, after school programs, and schools, all contribute to those. Um, experiences, but it's parents and families that are really in the best position to guide students through those opportunities to help them see the value of them and to allow them to participate, to gain access. So we want to help parents understand the ecosystem that is out there and why it is important for their children to have those experiences. So first, we're gonna to try to see this ecosystem from the parent's point of view. And I'll share strategies that we can use to empower parents and families to be an active part of this ecosystem, helping their children navigate through it and develop the skills that they need. We also wanna think about how we can help every child, regardless of their zip code, ethnicity, race, or gender, to have access to high quality STEM programs. STEM education and, and career exploration. We know that STEM can be fun for families, but it also can be intimidating. Parents, the research shows that parents worry about STEM and some of those worries emerge from their own views of STEM and some of those worries emerge from the society around them, the, the social context that they're in. So we need to be able to address both of those factors. Parents often think that they need to be an expert and know answers in order to support their children in STEM engagement. That's a common perception that I need to be able to teach them or answer their questions or help with their homework. But in a survey by Bayer, nearly one third of the parents said they don't feel confident enough in their scientific knowledge to be able to engage their children. So they have a sense that they need to have knowledge and that they, in many cases, not all, that's only a third, but they're worried that they lack that knowledge and they're not able to engage with their children or they choose not to because they don't feel like they have enough expertise. But what the research is, is showing us, it is not their knowledge or even their beliefs about um, science that makes a difference. It's their expectations and their beliefs about their children and their, the potential that their children have that has the greatest impact. So let me explain what I mean by that. The greatest impact parents can have is encouraging engagement to try new opportunities and new experiences. And from those outside of the family, there's often an assessment of how interested families are in STEM. And what we're seeing is that parents or families that are part of the dominant culture who share social and cultural expectations with the teachers and the schools that they're part of are often viewed as engaged in their children's learning and schools think that they value that engagement because those families are engaging in just the way teachers expect because of their shared culture. 
but families from non-dominant cultures who may not engage in exactly the way teachers expected are then viewed as deficient, that they are not um, as engaged in their children's learning as they should be. Though research actually shows that they can have just a significant impact even though they're engaging with their children in different ways. And out of school learning programs can help parents bridge the gap between what is expected by the school or others or even by themselves and what actually is impactful for their children. So the more we can help parents understand what does make a difference in terms of the impact that they have on children and share that with families, the more positive that experience is going to be. So what are the messages we want to get across? How can we shift the point of view so that we can empower parents and help them understand what they can do for their children? First, the most effective family engagement builds upon family strengths, their cultural assets, their funds of knowledge, and their desire to support their child. Here are three things that you can do to get started in shifting their, this point of view. First, we need to listen to families. This goes beyond just asking parents to fill out a survey once a year, and it requires a real intentional effort to engage parents in conversation and to create program elements that are based on the input on what we're learning from parents. It starts with an intentional effort to listen to parents, to invite their input early in the process so that they can be engaged in the decision making and also talking to parents about what the barriers that they face, what makes it hard for them to engage so that they can be part of solving those challenges and addressing barriers. Second, we need to empower parents with research, communicating with parents that this is what we found in research, what do you think of it, is a positive way to let them know that their expertise is valued and help them understand the importance of supporting their children in STEM. We want them to know that we value the knowledge and expertise that they bring to discussions about research. And we need to provide opportunities for adults and children to learn together. We need to offer tips and support to help parents guide their interaction with their children during STEM activities. We need to be sure that all children in our program have access to high quality STEM learning experiences, not just in our program, but in other areas of that ecosystem as well. In order for that to happen, it requires that families are equal partners in this process. So what are those things we want to convey to families about what they can accomplish? Well, here's what we're learning from the research. The positive impact comes from the things that families do in support of STEM learning, not in their knowledge or expertise in STEM. So the first message that we need to give parents is that they are important, that they have a critical role in supporting their child and helping them be part of the different learning opportunities that are available. We need to help families know that they can encourage their children to explore and question the world around them, that they don't need to have answers to support this act of questioning. And as the children grow, the role of supporting and encouraging exploration is going to change. We know that in middle school and high school, parents who encourage and support their children taking STEM classes have a huge impact on how prepared their students are at the end of high school for their next level of learning experiences. Another thing that families can do is find new places to visit to learn about science. And it doesn't have to be expensive. 
grocery stores, libraries, spray parks, nature centers, zoos, and museums are all great places for STEM learning experiences. And not all of them have a fee or, or a cost associated with visiting them. Families also can introduce science and scientific ways of thinking. And start with things like making observation, noticing patterns, problem solving, and communicating about evidence. These are strategies that could easily be shared with parents on a bulletin board or in a handout. Each month, maybe um, highlighting a different strategy, like making observations and giving them some suggestions about how to use that STEM practice and what the benefit is for their children. Families also support students in developing their STEM skills through practice and effort. And this is one of the real critical um, things that, that research shows families can do. Families can help children understand that there's no inherent limit to their ability to do STEM and that persistence is what is crucial in learning new skills. And parents are the ones that can take this message to children and have the greatest impact more than teachers or other adults in their lives. So this is the sort of grit um, perspective on learning that, that it's hard but that with effort they will improve and that is a really important message that children need about STEM and it comes best from families. There are also things that we can do in our out-of-school programs that make STEM more accessible and less intimidating for families. This is a, a model of what are the steps you can go through in your own program to make STEM accessible. And as I mentioned earlier, it starts with listening to families and paying attention to what it is that they want and that they, the barriers that they need help overcoming. We also want to help families understand that STEM can be fun that we use STEM skills every day. We use STEM when we decide if a child is sick, when we plan a party, when we put up a new shelf, or when we count money at the grocery store. These are all opportunities to practice STEM skills. We also want to support families and children in knowing there are many, many STEM jobs. For some jobs, children will need to go to a two-year or four-year college, but there are also STEM skills that be, can be learned through an apprenticeship or certification program. And the most important STEM skills are those thinking skills, teamwork, collaborating, communicating, and critical thinking. And it does not take a lot of STEM knowledge to build those skills and to encourage effort and persistence. And that's what's most important in the role of families. Now we're gonna switch points of view again and look at this from the perspective of how you can use STEM opportunities to get families more engaged in your after school program. Here's some tips for that. Don't try to engage families with your idea about family engagement. Instead, start with their input. Again, this is the third time we said listen to families. Talk to them early in the process and ask them what would be engaging to them and what challenges would have to be overcome in order for them to participate. <coughs> Next, communicate with families the value of engaging in terms that are important to them. So you have to listen to them to know what they value and how STEM can help support those things that they want for their children and the things that they need for their family. Next, connect the everyday knowledge and the cultural assets that your families bring to this to STEM so that they can see connections to what they know and they are doing. And then when you know what those connections could be, 
Plan STEM activities where parents and children can engage collaboratively in the learning process. Don't plan activities where parents can stay or are expected to stay on the periphery, but really get them in the process. And when you bring parents into that process of learning with their children, provide them with tools and support for that role. Tips or questions that parents can use as they interact with their children. Non-English version of the activities if you've got a lot of parents who don't speak English as their first language. And I'm going to share with you a resource called Family Creative Learning as one way that you can do this. Family Creative Learning is a series of five workshops that engage parents and children in learning together, just these things we just talked about, as designers and inventors using um, technology and creativity, using um, programs like Scratch or Makey Makey to engage them in innovation around STEM. These workshops are designed to strengthen the social support and expertise of families that may have limited access to other types of STEM resources and experiences. This graphic here comes from um, stemcreativelearning.org and it gives you an idea of how the family creative learning experience is designed. But I'm going to share a video also so that you can see what that looks like from um, uh, the experience point of view. I just put the link in the chat box for that and now I'm going to switch to um, that video. If you are having any trouble with the sound, please let me know in the chat box as we start the video. Or if you're having trouble seeing it, let me know that as well. Now we should be back to the PowerPoint. So in the video, you saw the um, different parts of, of a family creative learning experience and how technology is integrated into it. Technology permeates all aspects of our lives and parents are wondering what they can do to ex support their children in developing the skills to, to use that technology. So we want to 
show them the roles that they can take, roles like providing encouragement, asking questions, and giving feedback. And this um, family creative learning experience does a good job modeling that as families design and build projects together. They also develop interests, they generate ideas, and they overcome challenges together. The workshops, as we saw in the video, have four parts. And all four of them are important to meeting the goals of this whole overall experience. The workshop, it starts with eating. Having dinner together allows families to um, connect. And for some, it may be their chance to eat together as a family for that week. And it also eliminates some of the barriers that may limit participation. Um, if families have trouble attending because uh, of um, the time it takes to away from preparing meals together. The second part of the workshop is where the two groups, parents and children, separate and meet separately with facilitators. It gives the facilitators a chance to check in with parents and to help them know what the things they can do to support their children and the activity that's coming up and to coach them on that and also for for the children to meet with their peers and get excited about what they're going to be doing in the third part of the workshop families come back together to make to create to work on their projects um, independently as a family unit using the technology and the series of five workshops that repeats this throughout each of them can be downloaded from that link there, familycreativelearning.org. And you can download the whole facilitator's guide so you, that takes you through that process of planning all the workshops. And then at the end, the families come back together and they share with other families what they've been working on. They ask questions of each other, they give feedback on their ideas, and they get ideas from others about what they're going to do next time. And it helps build their confidence that they have the skills to support their children in STEM and in using technology. Sharing these experiences with others helps families learn from one another. So if this is something you'd be interested in, I encourage you to download the facilitator's guide and I'll also share it with the resources when I post the recording. In summary, there are many ways we can engage families, but the key is to start with listening and valuing the input from your families and then helping them understand what the, how important their role is and what they bring to this opportunities. As you engage families in this way, it can help your program grow and strengthen your program by providing more input from families, more buy-in from families. So I encourage you to communicate with families and let them know that you want to support them and what you can do. Engagement is not something that we do, engagement is something that we do with families, not something that we do to families. And that's an important perspective, I think, that we need to keep as we're thinking about engaging families in our program. Thank you for joining us today. I know we have run just a little long, so I will stay online. If you have questions, you can ask those in the chat box or just on mute. But I am going to end the recording now and um, give you a chance to ask any questions or share ideas that you may have.